So do you guys remember that riddle uh, that, we had, that we heard as kids? What is it that you can take more out of and it only makes it bigger? A hole. So this paradox is exactly what we see today. We have designers and engineers who want us to take more and more out of, out of the board and they want to add more and more power into it. It's a real paradox. So what kind of constraints have you guys felt when you're talking to your customers? We have a customer in Japan who's using a powerful networking processor with tight transient performance requirements and they're having challenges with board space requirements for the external capacitance needed. One data center manager took me into a room. It was a small space about the size of a conference room. It was completely filled with power conversion systems. He said it needed more power, but he just didn't have any more space for it. During my recent visits, some of my customers mentioned thermal as cooling as one of the major constraints. So there's lots of conventional uh, solutions to this kind of a problem, many of which GE has pioneered. We can make the products more modular. Uh, we can make them more compact. We can stack them. All these are great solutions and they work really well. But they're all based on the same assumption, really a constraint that says that there's only so much board area and we have to be constantly fighting with, other, with the designers and engineers who are creating value on that board with computational or networking capabilities. And that's the box and we have to live in the box. But what if we didn't have that box? What if we could think outside of that box? So guys, here's the challenge. I have two reams of paper, and I want you to take all the information on both reams and combine them into a single ream. How would you do it? It's simple. You just print on both sides of the paper. That's right. Use the unused back side of the paper. Most people don't print on the back side. That's right. That's exactly the problem. If we were to look at a conventional solution to this problem, we'd simply reduce the font and try to fit everything on the top side of the paper. That's exactly the constraint that we see here. But what if, that, what if we looked for that backside of the paper in the real application? Where is that negative space that if we could really use, we'd be able to give all that space back to the designers, all the top side space, to designers who really can use it to maximize the value of their innovation. So there are a lot of real constraints that limit our ability to take advantage of that negative space. There are mechanical constraints, mechanical or thermal constraints. There's feature constraints transient response constraints, thermal AC-DC constraints, or power distribution constraints. All of these make it difficult for us to exploit the space that's available. So let's take some of these uh, constraints in some detail. Let's talk about mechanical constraints. This is really the physical separation between two modules on a single PCB. So let's say that we had two 6 amp modules. How much space would we really need to leave on a PCB between them? Well, the key part is typically about four millimeters, so four millimeters surrounding the whole power unit. So it's really four millimeters of wasted space around each unit. That's a lot of wasted space. So how would we solve that? Well, it sounds simple, but the engineering was difficult. We created a dual output power model, the dual D-Links, which provides the combined 12 amps needed while maintaining completely independent control features for both six amp power rails. So in short, we went from two physical components to one. We maintained the independent control features for both six amp power rails. And while doing so, we went from 735 square millimeters to 550 of board space, giving back designers 25%. That's like uh, adding 25 yards to a football field. Wow, that's a lot of space. So, how about the back side of the board? We have the Slimlinks product, which is really, really thin. It's only 2.8 millimeters. And we can essentially flip the problem on its back, put these components on the back side of the board where there normally isn't any power. And because of the cooling capabilities, because they don't need um, forced air cooling, and because of their efficiency, they can reside quite safely on the back side of the board. But there's other applications too, right? Well, a traditional power unit is anywhere from 6 to 12 millimeters in height, which is just not practical for also some top of board placement situations. For example, many boards may have a daughter board on top of the main board, and a traditional power module will not fit underneath the daughter board, while slim links at under 3 millimeters will fit nicely. Also, another placement where slim links will work great is to place it near or under heat sinks 
leaving valuable full height component board space elsewhere. Wow. So these are really two great examples of how we can use design to give back some of that precious space on a PCB board. In the next two installments of the series, we'll talk about some of the other constraints. Feature constraints, transient response constraints, thermal AC-DC constraints, and power distribution constraints. We're going to look at how we can give that back to the designers who need it for their innovation. <laughs>